Hey guys, Lucky Ojo here, coming at you with her story. So, this is another one of my one-offs, just because I need a break from RPGs, because I have way too many RPGs going right now, and way too many long games. So this should be a one-off, just doing something a little different. So, uh, I have seen part of this game played, so I have a general idea of how it works. And basically, this is going to be like a crime game, and we're like trying to figure out what is happening after the fact. So everything in this game has already happened. We're just looking back and trying to find, based on the evidence that we find, what actually happened. So uh, this is more of a narrative game. So we're going to jump right in, guys, and try to figure out what's going on. Like, it's actually a pretty long game, so we're going to try to roll through it as best we can and figure things out. And it is a little slow moving. But you gotta kinda, you know, roll with it and figure out what's going on. So, um, bear with me. It actually is kinda interesting trying to piece everything together and figure out what's going on. So, here we go. We're starting up. I guess this is us. So, I thought there was an actual, like, oh, here we go. Read me. Introduction to the Logic Database. Computer technology is the backbone of modern police work. The Logic Database is one of many continuing efforts to digitize our workflow and preserve evidence in a manner which will allow you to work more efficiently. In the coming years, the computer will continue to be one of the most valuable items in your crime-fighting toolkit. Woohoo! Even though this is like a 1980, like, IBM computer. This database contains footage transferred from existing homicide and serious crime tape archive at Portsmouth. It has been automatically sorted using our ASR technology. Each statement made by the interview participants is stored separately so they can be tagged for submission to the court. The audio has been digitally stenographed and the content of the testimony is attached to each clip. To retrieve a clip, type in a word, example robbery, into the search field. Click search and the database will return all clips in which the speaker uses that word. To narrow a search, use multiple words like robbery supermarket if you are working from a printed transcript. You can e be even more precise. Use inverted commas to search for an exact match against the entire statement. So example, yes, I was there. Okay. To store a clip for later reference, click add to session. Also, if you wish to add additional tags to your own for to help for future searches, please click in the user tags box and type in your desired tags. For any further assistance, please contact your, your department's IT representative. And that's for that. Okay, so we'll get out of that. Um, really read me. All right. Hey, here's the database. I filed a Freedom of Information form to get you guest access. Everything seems to work. They transferred the videos off the original tapes in 1999, and then the Y2K thing hit, and they got mothballed. No one has touched them since. I couldn't find the server with the detective's footage on. Possibly those tapes got damaged when the old archives were flooded in 97. But figure this would be enough. Take your time. SB. I don't know who SB is. So who's in the bunch in the rubbish bin? So there's two things here. Hack info. Uh, something grow. G-R-A. Looks like O. And then E. Hack and mirror game. Um, one for the moment here. Classic two player strategy for lunchtime gaming. Ooh, there's a person. That's creepy. Cracks with glass. Okay. That's weird. I don't know what the mirror game is, but we'll worry about that later. Can we move this? Oh, we can. So there's a database checker and a clock. That's one of the other things we have. Okay. So here's, I guess, how, what things we've been using. So let's go ahead and do murder. Search. We've come up with four videos. And this is how this works. You can tell it's the one we haven't seen because of the eyeball. So, and that's basically how this, can I put you behind? You're annoying me right now. All right, here we go. So let's figure out what's going on here. You think it's murder? I mean, clearly it's murder. What can I do to help? Ooh. Somebody murdered somebody. Alright. Yeah. That's me. But February? I mean, that was months ago. What's that got to do with Simon's murder? Simon. Mm -hmm. 
slide that to session just because we need to talk about Simon. I didn't murder Simon. You've got it wrong. You've got the wrong person. Mm, okay. So she apparently is a person of interest in this murder. I'd like to speak to the lawyer now. Please. You have no murder weapon. You have nothing. And all these stories we've been telling each other. Just that. Stories. Oh, okay. So let's try... There's two words I want to try. So let's try stories first. Okay, so that gave a whole bunch more. And then obviously Simon, like I think Simon's gonna bring up a whole bunch more. It's okay. Sounds weird. I'm mean, not great to make up stories. Okay, that was useless. Oh, by the way, I think this database thing, as we refresh, that's how many videos we've got. All right. Yes. I read a lot as a child and watched lots of TV. Then the doll's house we had, we still have in the attic. It's kind of a fairy castle. We used to play out there and make up our own stories. There's a lot of we. I wonder who the we is. So that, they're talking about, uh, obviously that's as children but it's her and Simon as kids, friends, and she murdered a childhood friend? I don't know. Fairy tales. Stories about lost princesses, evil witches, magical mirrors, and lost children. So you see, even before I knew the truth, I'd found it in those stories. Or she knew the truth. The truth is going to be a, a motive, I think, here. So that's another thing we need to keep in mind. Truth will be another one I no. use. It was just me and her. Me and her. Eve so it wasn't Simon. Going to call their first child. There we go, Eve. They talked about it. I'm going to try when it came back. Florence's family had a history of firstborn girls, so they were convinced it was going to be a girl. Even Florence. Mm. It's hard to know if this is all true. These are stories I remember, that I read when I was a child. Maybe I misread, maybe I misunderstood. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard to remember what happened last week. So we're gonna add that one to session. There was a bunch of key words in that one. So now we need Florence, because apparently there's some person named Florence. And then she mentioned an Eve, like, oh, Eve and I did something, and then, uh, we were going to name the baby Eve. I'm not sure where the dollhouse came from. That's the second time they talked about dollhouse. I don't know if it was given to them or they inherited it. I mean, they wouldn't have had the money to buy it. It was so huge. It must have been taken up to the attic in parts and then reassembled up there. It's a beautiful thing. Wallpaper to scale. Little furniture, the lights work, mirrors, beds, big duvets and pillows. We spent hours and hours playing in it, we invented all these characters and families who lived there. Mm. We wrote paperwork for them all, passports, diaries, and gave them all really elaborate stories. Once a moth got trapped in there, we'd left a light on. Was making the most horrendous noise. We tried to kill it, but it was tough. We ended up crushing it under a copy of the Arabian Nights. So I don't know if Arabian Nights is going to be a thing. So we have a bunch of stuff to talk about. So let's try Dollhouse first. Because that's come up a couple times now. Yeah, see, there's several new ones for Dollhouse. We still need even Florence and Simon. But I feel like those will bring up a bunch of stuff, so... Yes. I inherited it from my parents, so it made sense to move back. Me and Simon. Felt like going back to old ways before the pregnancy. 
reminded me of being a girl, a dollhouse in the attic. Oh, she had a tattoo. Old things. We didn't sleep in my parents' bedroom for a long time. We decorated it as soon as we moved in, but it was another year before we started sleeping there. So that's another Simon reference. So there's her there. I think she got a tattoo. Like, I thought that was a tattoo right there. Like, if we go back. Well, you can kind of see it right there. Maybe that's just a smudge. What's the date on that one? So that's July 1st. And that is June 25th. And that is July 3rd. Mm. She recognized me from the window. She told me to come inside and she hid me. They had made the attic into a place where Hannah could play. It was a dollhouse. Another name, Hannah. She hid me up there. No one else ever went into the attic. It was her place. So now we have Hannah, Florence and Simon. The legal stuff was completed very quickly. Hand moved back in with Simon. Eric gave Simon the week off to help with the move. And now Eric. He decorated, modernized wallpaper curtains. Hannah insists the attic be left as it was, dollhouse and all. Simon never went up there. So, let's go with this. Let's try Florence first. So we got four new videos from Florence. Let's just go down the line here. But now we have Eric, Hannah, and Simon still. And Eve. So Harris, uh, Eve, Simon, and Hannah. I'm losing my mind here. Across the road, where my parents first lived there, was a midwife called Florence. When Hannah was born, I was born at the same time. The midwife was there to help. I'd been throttled by the cord, probably wrapped around my neck by Hannah. The midwife told my mother I was dead. But I wasn't. She wrote all this stuff in a diary. Amazing what people will admit to on paper. So I think diary. Oh, oh! You see that? It's like a horror movie, dude. Like you see your reflection in there. It's kind of creepy. Florence took me home with her. Mother hadn't been expecting twins and had a healthy baby. I guess she was just happy for Florence to clean up, take away the evidence that this was anything but a happy occasion. Okay, so Florence stole her. It sounds like Hannah's Florence her sister. Me in her home. I never left it. She kept me out of sight. It wasn't odd for people to see a midwife with a baby, carrying in supplies, washing nappies, that sort of thing. I never knew any different. I grew up looking out of my window and seeing her across the road. I thought it was like a reflection in the mirror. That's like the fifth time we've heard mirror, she too. Me. Okay. Again, man. My God. The reflection keeps coming out. Florence was a warm, kind person. But she was broken, I guess. When I found her diary, I was a found a biscuit tin with other stuff in it. All the papers, letters, that kind of thing. Her story was in there. I never really spoke to her about it. I was far too young to really understand. I guess I just put it together later, once I was older. She had loved children, planned to have a large family, but her husband died in the war. Ooh, that sucks. And that was back when you married for life. 
She never felt like she could marry again. Isn't that strange? She was a widow from her twenties. But, I mean, I guess it was different then. You know, you married for life and she felt she could never marry again. I guess it was harder, a war widow. One of the dead. Yeah. I'm, I don't know, maybe there was more to it than that. I don't really know. Okay. So now we know about Florence. So Florence doesn't seem like a terrible... Well, she's a terrible person because she stole a child. But... Uh, she doesn't seem to have a lot of plot relevance to this. We could look up the war. But I don't know if it's going to get us anything else. Yeah, I guess one more. When we weren't together, we'd send secret messages by tapping out a code that we'd learn from a book. The knock code. Something prisoners of war would use. We tap them out on radiator pipes or the attic floor. type in code from that because they had their own code okay so that didn't give us anything so here's where we can start getting like the big ones so we type in Hannah yeah so let's, let's go from the left so this one's really early on this is in June everyone we've seen so far has been like in July my name is Hannah H A N N A H. It's Pandre. It reads the same backwards as forwards. It doesn't work if you mirror it though, it's not quite symmetrical, but well, I mean, you get the idea. Sorry. Hannah Smith, I live at 31 Gladstone Street. Hmm. Let's see what you're doing here. She looks up very upset. This is the end of June. There's their knocking code we know about now. July 3rd, that's way later. And that's another mention of Eve. So let's see what we got with Eve. We got four new ones. Let's figure out what's going on here. Well, my friend Eve. I mean, she was a friend from when I was a kid. And she was always more popular with the boys, and I used to hate her for it. I mean, really hate her sometimes. Hmm. So she was jealous of Eve. Yes. We'd fight. We fought on the beach once and I held Eve's head underwater. There was no one else around. It was at the far end of the beach. And I held her head under and I kept it out. And for a moment, just wanted to kill her. Whoa. And watch her drown. Well, you're a sociopath. 
But that was it. It was just a moment. We made up after. <laughs> It's a love-hate relationship. Yeah. Um, okay. With friends like you. A police station. Yeah. When I was young. We ran away on my birthday. Bob Dylan was playing in London and we thought we could break into his tour bus and have him take us with him. The taxi driver we paid to drop us off. I mean, we'd save money pinched a bit here and there to pay for the fare. He was suspicious because we were so young, so he told the police. So they came and picked us up and took me back to Portsmouth. My mum picked me up from the station. But I blamed everything on my friend Eve. So my parents let me off. Huh. So first she tries to kill Eve. Then she... Um, blames everything on Eve. She's not a very good person. Also, I just now noticed seven entries found, but you're only limited to the first five. So we'll have to narrow the search. Well, we'll keep going with more and we'll find out. My mother called me Eve. That's a very short clip. Okay. So we can probably put, like, kill... Let's see what happens. We've got two new ones. One see, that, that is a tattoo. She didn't kill you. You think I killed Simon because he was having an affair? Well, I didn't Ooh, kill an him. An affair. I wasn't even there. I was in Glasgow worrying about whether my baby was still growing inside me. I mean, why would I kill Simon? I loved him. So we need to look up a fair and possibly Glasgow. I mean, what if they were crazy? You hear about these crazy people all the time. I mean, why would anyone who knew Simon want to kill him? Okay. So we can look up Glasgow. Nothing. An affair. Yeah, there we go. An affair. Simon wasn't having an affair. Ooh, that's... She changed her story. One minute she's saying he's not, but then she said, oh, do you think I'd kill him just because he was having an affair? That's only two days apart, too. You're reaching here. And I don't know why. No. I've never cheated on anyone. I've never taken anything from anyone. Simon's dead. So he is dead. But I have my baby to care for. Yeah, so we need to look at baby or pregnancy and... Why are you trying to make me sad? Why are you so obsessed with sex and affairs? You cheated on your wife. Is this your thing? Ooh, she's mean. We're going to add that session. There's a lot of keywords there. So, before we go to Simon, we can type in cheat. Or cheated, maybe. <laughs> so, yeah, here's another one. That's Mom the third. I never knew what was going on. We got so good at it. We were so in sync that we'd use each other to cheat. If one of us had a hangover, the other one would go to school. Whoever was best at a subject would sit the exam. There were lots of differences between us. Some things one is better than the other at. So, what? <laughs> so the other me, so they're twins. And it sounds like they, they literally moved each other up to the attic. So that's another thing we didn't look up. We didn't look up attic yet. Yeah, so here's another one. 12 entries found. But let's talk about the attic some more. Could the hairs have come from somewhere else? I mean, could they... We have a lot of dolls in the attic. There's a Rapunzel doll with long blonde hair. Could they have come from there? 
Okay. So we're just going to put doll in real quick and see what el if anything else comes from doll. Just to see. Okay. So they were obviously twins. So let's type in twin and see what we get here. So I've got two new ones. Three new ones. And that started the 2nd of July. Twins? <laughs> really? Are you really asking me that question? Oh, man. <laughs> Are you out of your mind? Twins? So that's kind of weird. Oh, man. See the, the reflection again. It's like, guys, come on, man. There were always princes and princesses. They were the special people, more important than the other characters in their stories. We knew we were like that. Twins. Magical. We were the princesses. We had a post on Princess Diana from the newspaper up in our attic. I had a pride of place. And underneath we used to put all our special things. Mm. When her engagement was announced, we were obsessed with everything she did. And later, when her life went so bad, we felt for her. Her divorce last year just kind of drew a line under things. There we go, divorce. So now we find out. So whoever the other one is, I don't know who's who ever. We don't know enough to find out. So we need to go to divorce. Nope. Okay. But we knew if someone got divorced. So we already looked up Eve and Hannah, but we have not looked up Simon yet. Actually, Eric. Eric is the one we want to do first. We know Simon's going to give a bunch of them. Well, oh my god. Even Eric did a bunch. Alright. Here we go. He was wearing um, a shirt. The blue turtleneck shirt and jeans. He has a watch. It's a really nice one. That was a gift from his boss, Eric. Okay, so that must be um, Simon's boss. He had his coat, a long grey duffel coat, black pants in there. Uh, hmm. He would have taken that with him. It's not in the house. And that was really early on. 618, that's middle of June. So, it was Friday evening. We had an argument. He left. On Saturday, he didn't come back. I waited all day. He was supposed to go help Eric out with something on the Saturday afternoon. They had a job. He didn't show. So Eric was ringing on the phone. I checked at The Rock. That's our local. They said they'd the seen him on the Friday night, but not since. He still wasn't back this morning. It just isn't like him at all. Still not back by dinner time. It's getting dark again. So I decided to come see you. Okay, so we're gonna finish this up. Like, we also need to look up Rock after this, and probably Eric Simon and yes, Eric's there's a boss. Yes, that we share of Cavalier and a van he uses for work. It's owned by Eric, but we look after it. Both of them are there now, parked on the street. I'm not sure about the keys for the van. I can look for you when I get back. Okay. Yes, that would be in his wallet. It's a visa, a silver one. He doesn't like to spend money he doesn't have, so he usually pays with cash, but Eric convinced him to get one. So it sounds like they're kind of friends, Eric and Simon. Uh, Eric was like an uncle to him. They were pretty close. They spend a lot of time with each other, especially when they have to go to conferences. Have you met his wife, Diane? Diane, there's another name too. So we're going to add that in session just because there's names. So let's type in The Rock just so we can see if there's any other new ones there. So we'll get these three and then we'll go back to like Eric Simon and Eric Boss. Because some of these things got cut out. Let's see where we're at right now. Yeah, we got a bunch more. So we're doing pretty good. It's The Rockington Arms, The Rock. It's run by a nice couple, Peter and Susan. There's some other regulars there that Simon likes to drink with. And the barmaid they're having sometimes, Helen. Peter and then there's Peter, Simon Susan, and Helen. Drinks. 
So let's save that because that's ah, I didn't Helen mean to do that. The rock. Peter, Susan, Helen now. I guess the rock. You've spoken to everyone there. Someone must have seen where he went. I don't know. So many things could have gone wrong. No, no one has been in the last few weeks. We had a plumber come in three, four weeks ago. Someone sang with you from the rock. Okay. So now we know. Peter, whoa. Let's see if Peter's anywhere. Nope. Helen. There we go. No. I think he spoke to Helen. She said he was upset about her argument, but I'm not sure what else he said. He likes Helen. He likes blondes. Ooh. So now we know he likes blondes. That could have been something too. But real quick, let's see what the other name. There was three it's the names. Rock and the rock. There's some other names. Susan. There that's some. Susan was the other name. Okay, so that wasn't one. Let's type in blonde. Oh. Um, I think Susan Helen. six foot. Darkish blonde hair, average build. He's clean shaven. If his beard grows, it goes ginger, so he shaves it. I mean, not that there's anything wrong with ginger hair. <laughs> uh, and bought a photo. They said a spring photo. This was taken last year on holiday in Rome. Maybe That's Rome or happened. holiday. But before that, we'll do these. This other person doesn't exist. I don't know what the blonde wig is, but it could be anything. Have you looked at the cat flap? Cat flap? We'll just type in cat and see what happens. Because there was another thing about a cat earlier. You want me to play something? Whoa, I'm frame rate. Okay. Probably needs tuning. So that's Eve, obviously, singing about Sing Hannah sticking her head in the water. So I think that's a 
good place to stop. That was good. We've got an achievement for traditional ballad. But that leads me to another thing. So let's. So six entries found. What do you want to bet Eve blonde? Because it said the youngest sister, which, I mean, Eve was the youngest. I mean, they're twins, but remember, here, here's me speculating before we go. So Hannah came first. The Florence allowed the baby to live. I mean, or gave it to the mother. Eve comes out with the umbilical cord around. Florence is like, hey, sorry, your second baby's dead, the young one. Um, not actually dead. Florence steals it. Eve runs away, lives up in the attic. At least that's what I'm, it's sounding like. And then the way that song said, they both love the captain's son, but the captain's son falls in love with e well, the youngest one, and the youngest one turns into a blonde. So I'm wondering if Eve trying to like be her own person dyes her hair blonde and which I'm assuming Eve was the one playing the guitar at least what it sounded like so I'm wondering if Eve is a blonde so let's let's try it nothing Oop. maybe maybe I'm not right all right never mind but we still have tons of things to go for so we still need to do like Eric boss yep there we go not me. He would go to the pub. He had his drinking buddies there, but no one ever really came back to the house. Sometimes Eric, his boss, and his wife would come in for dinner. That would be us returning the favor. Diana's a really good cook, into her trendy ingredients. And the last time Simon cooked something off Master Chef, he got the recipe off Seafax. And I did my Lloyd Grossman bit, commenting from the sidelines. I had to find fennel from the supermarket. Have you ever eaten fennel? All right. I got another achievement for that. That was, like, so random. Have you ever eaten fennel? Oh, okay. Um, I parked up on the street. It was busy, so I parked down the end of the road. I walked up to the house, I knocked on the door, no answer. I took my keys out of my bag, unlocked the door. The main lock was unlocked. I could tell because the key wouldn't turn when I tried to turn it to the left. I walked in, Simon's coat wasn't on the peg. I couldn't see his shoes on the shoe rack. Um, I shouted out for him. I walked straight into the kitchen. He usually sits in there to have a cup of tea and read his paper. He wasn't there. I touched the kettle, it was cold. Um, I looked quickly into the living room, nothing. I walked upstairs to the bedroom, he wasn't there. Mm. I didn't search for him because it was pretty clear he wasn't there. And then I had a shower. Whilst I was in the shower, the phone rang. I think it was Eric, his boss. I didn't answer it. Then I came out and I was just exhausted. So I lay down on the bed and I fell asleep, but I didn't mean to. I woke up a couple of hours later and I was surprised to see no one in the bed next to me. And then I remembered where I was and what had happened. That's when Eric called again. I spoke to him. Then I called Simon's parents. And then I decided to come and see you. That enough? See, that sounds like a different story than what was said originally. But this is on July 1st. Like, the story keeps changing. kind of interesting. I wonder what they get for tea since they're British. Ha ha! I knew it. Because <laughs> she's talking about boiling the tea um, earlier. Could I have a cup of tea? Well, never mind. That was completely that was completely useless. A cup of tea would be good, thanks. Just one sugar. Oh my god. I should never type that in. This is so okay. useless. I parked up in the street. It was busy, so I had to park down the end of the road. I walked up, knocked on the door, no answer. I took my keys out of my bag and unlocked the door. The main lock was unlocked. You can tell because the key doesn't turn when you try to turn it to the left. I walked in. Simon's coat wasn't on the peg. I couldn't see his shoes in the shoe rack. I shouted out. 
Um, I walked straight into the kitchen, because he usually sits in there to have a cup of tea and read his paper, but he wasn't there. I touched the kettle, it was cold. I looked quickly in the living room, nothing. So I walked upstairs to the bedroom, and he wasn't there. I didn't search for him because it was pretty clear he wasn't there. I had a shower, the phone rang whilst I was in the shower, I didn't answer it, I think it was Eric. Then I was just exhausted, so I lay down on the bed and I fell asleep, though I didn't mean to. I woke up a couple of hours later and I was surprised to see no one in the bed next to me. And then I remembered where I was and what had happened. That's when Eric called again, this time I spoke to him. Then I called Bug and Eleanor. And then I decided to come and see you. Spoke to Doug and Eleanor. Eleanor, that's two new names. That is, so that was the exact same conversation we had, but there are slight differences. Doug and Eleanor are two names we don't know. Maybe a fresh cup of tea? Are you kidding me right now? Get out of here. So let's talk about Doug. <laughs> Yeah. I've been around to Doug and Eleanor's and they're very worried. I feel sorry for them. I got a job to contribute, you know. Doug knew someone and I got a job as a dinner lady at the primary school. They said it didn't matter if I could cook or not, just don't poison the kids. <laughs> That's scary. Poison, let's look at that. So you see. It's always been complicated between me and Simon. It's never just been the two of us. There's always been pressure. Mmm, pressure. What kind of pressure, though? Um, I hoover my dust every week. I mean, maybe less. I once asked Eleanor how often I should dust, and she said, if people ask, tell them you do it once a week, but every few weeks is okay. I think she was just trying to make me feel better. I mean, when I was there, she was hoovering every day. You know, ran an ordered house. You know how that generation is, putting on a brave front. Hmm. She has secret stashes of cigarettes. Doug doesn't even know she smokes. When I was there, I saw her. She has these sort of porcelain vases, ornamental, next to the Reader's Digest books cigarettes inside. And she still has them. I mean, last time I was there, I looked in a vase. There was a fresh pack. I mean, all those years of marriage, and she still has a secret like that. Let's do a secret, too. So you have Eleanor, secret. We still got things going. We just, we're, still, we're figuring it out. 1984. It was an awful year in the end. We were living at Doug and Eleanor's. I lost the baby at the end of spring and my parents died. Then we needed a baby. Summer. Yeah. It was a hot summer, a heat wave. So when they discovered the bodies, it was just awful. Because of the circumstances, them dying together like that, they brought in a lot of police. A forensic entomologist. I had to look that up. It was because of the heat. All right, so we need still need Eleanor. Whoa, I misspelled her name. I still misspelled her name. Oh my goodness, I can't spell, hang on. Let me find the thing with her real quick. 1984. That's not the one I wanted. Okay. I parked up in the street. It was cold. That is not the one I wanted either. Hang on, just one second. Um, I hoover my dust. How often I should dust, and she said, Yay. People are. This is one of those names you don't spell very often. All right. At least one more. Yes. 
I speak with Eleanor at least once a day. Not that there's anything much to say. It's more just... Whoa, language people. Got another achievement for spilt coffee. Um, I guess we can do coffee. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. They care a lot about their drinks in this game. We're filling this thing up pretty good, though. Black coffee, thanks. No sugar. Sweet enough as it is. Oh, my God. Back up, girl. Wait, what day was that? That was really early on. Yes. Um, I got to Glasgow. I was exhausted, so I pulled over and slept in the car. I woke up because a rubbish truck went past. I got some petrol, bought a coffee and a pastry, tried calling someone from the payphone, and then headed back. Okay. So we can type in payphone. I think I went to Glasgow the first time. Back eight years back. It was a present in itself. I shouldn't even be drinking coffee with the baby. It's been hard trying to give it up. I think they say you can have one cup. And we need to look up baby. Baby's a big one. No. I've had enough coffee for today, thanks. Glass of water. So that's how she got into the other shirt. She probably put it on after she spilled the coffee. Coffee, I guess. Milk and sugar. That was all super useless. So we still need to look up baby. Figure out, oh wow, yeah, 17 entries found. So like, we need to start narrowing them down. We spent the wedding night in a hotel in Brighton. It would have been too much to do more. We were saving for the baby. It was wonderful to be in a hotel, away from home, just alone together. Since then, we've always tried to get away for our holiday. So there's something up with her, the way she talks. About always wanting to be alone, there's always we stress. We our own place. Simon dropped out of school, went full-time at the Glaziers. That was Eric's generosity. We moved in with his mum and dad. They had a spare room for us and the baby. If it came. It was a nice change, time to myself, living there for those months, full of hope. All right. Whoa, my bad. All right, we're figuring this out little by little. No. I lost the baby. I had a miscarriage at eight months. Oh, that sucks. We carried on living at Simon's parents until that was only a few months after. We also have to look up her parents dying, too. It was after dinner. I had spoken to Sam's parents on the phone. I looked up for an early night, and I suddenly had this thought. I think it was something his mother had said. She'd been speaking about old stuff. Sad stuff. About when we lived there. About the baby. There's some boxes in the cellar, nursery stuff, stuff we never needed, and I never had the heart to throw out. And I suddenly remembered that when I looked down there the week before, those boxes, that pile, was in the wrong place. I went cold all over. I went down there with a the torch and went straight to the back and that's when I saw the bin bags. Bin bags? Uh-oh. Pulled them open. Saw the body. I screamed and that's when I called the police. Ah, this dude again. So, he straight up got bodied in the house. That's creepy. Yeah. It was a shock to him. I mean, we never thought it was possible. I don't know what he... I mean, I hadn't decided whether to keep the baby. I wasn't really ready to talk to him about it. Alright, so we can say lost baby. 
Okay. Um, her baby died, maybe? Nope. We can look up murder, because now we know that dude got bodied. <laughs> uh, da -da 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 -da. did we look up Simon yet? No, we have not. 61 entries found. Oh my god. Simon. Simon Smith. He works at Ernst Brothers Glass. They do windows, all kinds of glass. Simon does the more special work. So we'll look up glass too. Feature windows, artistic things. Really beautiful things. Glass, mirror, and windows. Yes, there's an Amstrad one. No one uses it for very much. There's a printer so you can write letters on it. Simon sometimes plays games. You know, trying to uh, save the princess. That kind of thing. All right, so then we'll get this one. Simon isn't the type to run off or do anything crazy. Someone must have done something to him or there must have been some kind of accident. So what do we do next? So like, they still think he's missing there, but he obviously gets bodied. So let's, let's look up just Simon Smith, his full name. <laughs> nope, just that one time, huh? Let's look up Glass. Okay. Because he works at a glass place. No, he doesn't have any tattoos. We can look up Tattoo as well. He has a scar. Down here, near his stomach, past his hip. Cut himself with some glass. That was before, a long time ago. He looks just like the photo. Um, he's not got his glasses on here, though. He takes them off with the camera. But he needs them to see properly, you know. He has to read a newspaper or a menu in a restaurant. Not book so much, or watching TV. He likes TV. Hmm. All right. Let's see what else we got. It wasn't the present so much. It was one of those arguments that had been simmering for a while. The present was a mirror. A nice mm. mirror. He'd engraved the glass. The kind of mirror a princess would have in a story. He made it specially for me. So mirror is definitely coming next. No. On his clothes, that would make sense. He made it by hand. I mean, he brushes the silver onto the glass. That's not how they make mirrors these days. I mean, he made the mirror, and he gave it to me. So let's look up mirror. Whoa. 11 entries. So after that, we can look up like mirror gift or. Mirror. I can't remember. I put it somewhere safe. Upstairs, I think. I haven't looked at it since. Oh, that's not the same as what she was saying earlier, just a second ago. Silver leaf? Three days later. No. He normally solves them properly. This mirror, it's supposed to look antique. The reflection isn't as good. It's the perfect mirror for someone who doesn't like to look at their own reflection. Huh. So we took out being like mirror gift? No. Uh, present. There we go. There's a new one. Her story this said she late. waited for him to come back. She put on my wig, some of my clothes. We need a wig. Pretended to be me. They talked. She'd enjoyed being me. He said he wanted to be with me. Then he took out a present. Another mirror. Just like the one he'd given her earlier. <laughs> that 
unique present. She went crazy, smashed the mirror. They argued, screamed. He hit her. So she grabbed a piece of the mirror and just swung it round. She cut his throat clean open. Oh, snap. She didn't even meant to scare him off. Oh, my God. So now we know. Ooh, creepy person right there. So now we know. Let's add that to the session. So she, we straight up know that, it, that it, she killed him right there. So he cut his throat open. Wow, that's a big thing. So we already know who someone it's killed funny. him. But which one? Did not real. His throat. It looked like his throat had been cut. And then he his glasses. as his thick glasses. It doesn't always work. We should look up glasses as well. On his throat. How? Oh man, same reflection. So this is getting kind of interesting. So we know how he died now. Before it was three, something like that. I walked in, saw Simon. Was on the floor of the living room. His throat had been cut. There was a lot of blood. Yeah, he was dead. Oh, snap. So let's see how many times they talk about him being dead. So there is some new ones here. Yeah. When they've gone to bed feeling ill, thinking it was flu or something, the neighbor called me, I had to use my key to let them in. We found them dead in their bed. That's someone else. And they'd been there for days, no one had noticed. Just awful. It was so soon after my miscarriage, the worst year of my life. I've been so happy to get married, and after that, it was just like, fuck. All right. I'm glad we had that moment. It's all that matters, really. The baby. Simon's dead, but the baby, that's how he will live on. Our baby. All right. I thought you had a miscarriage at eight months. It was supposed to be a secret. Just because Simon is dead, it doesn't mean I have to give up all his secrets. It doesn't have anything to do with what happened to Simon. No one murdered my husband because he cheated his expenses for a romantic weekend in Oxford. Whoa. Now we need to look up Oxford. Rehearsed. You ask me the same question, you'll get the same answer. Is that your evidence? Of course I thought about what happened then. It's all I thought about. My husband is dead. So now we can look up Oxford. Very interesting. There was a conference. Something to do with double glazing in Oxford. Okay. We're just going to go back to Glasgow. Are you sure? That looks like a hint tattoo. What would be doing in Oxford if there was no conference? I remember calling him. He said it was boring and he spent most of the time at the bar. Interesting. Maybe he was with Hannah. I'm assuming that one's Eve. Um... Let's do phone. I got a couple. Because remember, she kept talking about calling. And we'll do call in a second. Yeah. 
Well, they have one for the glaciers, but it's only for work. Mobile phone? It's 1994. It's in the kitchen. I saw it plugged into its charging cradle. How in the world do you have a mobile phone? It's 1994. Like, those things are like tanks. Sure. Yes, of course, if that would help. Will you phone the house to let me know when you want to come round? Then I can make sure that I'm there. Okay. Um, let's refresh this, see where we're at. So we've got all the beginning ones now. Let's... Let's talk about parents. Or parent. I got pregnant. Both our parents had a big powwow. We weren't even in the room. And they decided we should get married. Okay. Then my parents died. It was the worst year of my life. A miscarriage and then my parents. Okay. We look up pregnant. Yeah. Yes, I'm fine. I won't be sick again. This happened some days. I'm pregnant. This morning sickness. Oh. <laughs> well, yes. You found out on my birthday. I told him I was pregnant. Interesting. That's where like the story comes across. So that I think Eve was pregnant. All. The story starts when she's born. Mother Gothel, a witch, takes Rapunzel from her parents and keeps her locked up in this tower. Rapunzel gets pregnant by the prince, and Mother Gothel is furious, so she cuts off her hair and throws it. Actually, her hair's already short here, so that's already happened. But she throws her into the wilderness, and Rapunzel is reunited with the prince, who's blind. But she kills him with her tears, and so it's a happy ending. <laughs> is that too much? That's kind of random. Um, so, I forgot what I was going to say now. I got distracted by that. Oh, Eve. So I think Eve is pregnant, and I don't think Hannah is. I think Hannah had the miscarriage originally. And now Eve is pregnant? I'm pretty sure that's how that's going down. I'm not 100% though. We need more when data. When I arrived in Glasgow, I was exhausted. We need to do Glasgow. Keep the streets were empty. I was driving badly. And I hit a taxi. Not a big crash. Just paintwork. The guy was so pissed off because I didn't have a driving license on me. But when I told him I was pregnant, he made sure I got to the hospital so they could check me out. It was fine. The hospital must have details when I was looked at. There's a scratch on the car. Yep. All right, cool. So let's do Glasgow. Glasgow. I think I misspelled it last time. Yep, I did. Cool. So I got in the car. And I drove. I just kept driving north. Just kept going, just wanted to get as far away as I could. When I finally stopped, I was all the way up in Glasgow. I was so tired. I just had to sleep. Okay. There we go. Let's keep going here. Yeah, that's Simon's watch. It was a gift from Eric. He got it this year. It was a wedding anniversary gift. Steel. It would have been Diane who chose it. She has really nice taste. Did we ever do Diane? I don't remember if we did. That time. It must eliminate me. I was in Glasgow then. 
Yeah, yeah. No, I don't think so. Glasgow was deserted that early in the morning. So let's type in Diane. I forget if we did Diane or not. No, we did not. All right. Diane is really nice. She helps out at the glaziers, organizes the Christmas party, that sort of thing. They have two kids, really sweet kids. She used to look out for me when I worked there. Okay. Another guitar one. Sam and Eric arguing? No. I can't imagine they'd be arguing, and they get on so well. Unless it was something to do with work. Maybe Simon was being too much of a perfectionist. But I don't know. You should ask Diane. All right, so we can type in work. We haven't done work yet. And then we haven't, I don't think we've done car either. So let's do those. Yeah, we got one more. No. I'm not sure what strange would be, but he hasn't been acting odd. He's been busy at work, but nothing too stressful. Um, let's do the car, because she hit a car when she was in Glasgow. I wasn't in the house all of Friday night. We also after do the Friday. Argument, after Sam left, I left too. I was upset and I wanted to get away. So I took a call. Okay. Mm. I left the next day, Saturday. I slept for a few hours in the car. When I woke up, I came straight back. Uh, Simon wasn't returning my calls and I wanted to try and make up. I got back to the house and Simon wasn't there. And I... Is there a bin? Oh, God, girl. Jeez. Yeah, I pulled over and slept in the car. This was just by the side of the road. I was exhausted. Yeah, I bet you would be exhausted. Ugh. Let's refresh and see where we're at. Oh, yeah. All right. So, let's type in, like, Friday. Nope. Saturday. There was a couple mentions there. It was late. Early Saturday morning. Okay. That was completely useless. Some of these things are just, like, super useless. A week or so ago. It would have been the Saturday before my birthday. You know, I get like that on the weekends, have a lie-in, then want to get up and blitz the house. That's what we need to look up, is birthday. There we go. Yes, that's my birthday. Not one of the big ones, but I guess you can see that. Because that's what started this whole mess to begin with, I think, it was the birthday. It was my birthday, like you said. We were going to have a meal at home. We had our meal. He gave me his present. I guess I didn't like the present. And then we need to look up wig after this too. We still need wig. Oh, when I woke up. Okay. I, uh, I woke up. Simon was already up and he made me birthday breakfast of eggs benedict. Uh, we both had to go to work so we saved presents till later. Um, I got to work, had some birthday cake, children sang me happy birthday, then I came home. The birthday meal was a takeaway, um, and Simon gave me his present, which I didn't mind. And after that, we talked about the baby, it turned into a big argument. Simon left, I was furious. I wanted to get as far away as I could and get some space to think. So I left. Mm. Mm. So we can look up argument. We also can look up tattoo. I forgot to do that earlier. Yeah. 
Oh, my tattoo. I got it to express my individuality. It's an apple and a snake. Nice, another achievement for expressing an individuality. So I moved out. Got a small bed sit. Got my tattoo to mark the occasion. I was singing in a bar in the evenings. So I had some money, enough money to cover my rent. And I've been doing something similar ever since. I haven't put down any roots. I don't exist. Whoa, what? You don't exist. Well, that's a thing. He saw me singing one of my shows. Pure chance. Not sure I remember what he was even doing there. Afterwards, I had a drink at the bar and he came over and we got talking. I knew who he was. Obviously, I knew who he was. But... He didn't know who I was. He was fascinated by the likeness. He guessed my name from my tattoo. <laughs> Told me it was a palindrome, but that would impress me. We should look at palindrome. I enjoyed talking to him. That's the second time we've seen palindrome. To be able to sit and interact and talk to him after all this time. He didn't tell me he was married. Ooh, married is another one. I'm not sure what he was thinking. He later told me it was like he was dreaming. A waking dream. All right. So, that is interesting. So we can do wig, because I think wig will get somewhere. Whoa, what's chit chat? So first, I was, huh. how's it going, none? Not yet. No. Okay. Okay, I'll hang on back longer. Buzz when you're ready. Hangs up. All right, cool. So, because we still know, we still have more to go. I mean, we know what happened, I think. It, as long as we know, well, we know who because the tattoo, so that's Eve. Because the apple and the snake. Apple Snake, obviously Eve. During this interview, she talked about the other one killing Simon. So that's Hannah. Hannah had to kill Simon. We don't fully understand why. I mean, she talked about, well, you do. He want, he picked Eve, and they even sung it in that song, like the picking the blonde one, the young one. The wig? You mean, what type of wig? Ooh. No, I've never worn a wig. What kind of wig? Oh, she's mad now. See, I think she, like, despises Eve. No. The parents decided there would be a wedding. And after the wedding, Hannah moved in with his parents. There was no way I could follow. So we were separated again. I stayed in the attic. It was hard. It was like I suddenly didn't exist. Exist. I was thinking about that. In case anyone recognized me, I started wearing a wig. Hannah and I would meet up in the park. I was trying to get pregnant. But I couldn't. I mean, I couldn't do it with anyone we knew, so it was sex with strangers. Drunk guys I'd met in clubs. Parks and alleyways. Oh my god, lady. I was 17. It felt like I was being punished. But it was Hannah who had betrayed us. I had That's a friend when one of the guys gave me an STD. When we met up, it was disturbing. For the first time, my reflection. She didn't look like me. She was fatter, flushed. If anything, I was getting skinnier. I had a hearty look sometimes. 
we talked about what to do. Mm. Was it time to become our own people? I mean, that seemed like the right thing to do, but neither of us wanted it. It sounded like Hannah wanted it, though. We agreed that her and Simon would get their own place as soon as possible, and then I could move in. And that was the plan. See, see, I feel like Eve kind of wanted that, but I feel like Hannah didn't want that. Like, Hannah was all about not having this was Eve there. nine, about nine. I went round and she was waiting for me. She was furious and so angry. The kind of anger you could only have towards yourself. We screamed at each other, argued, cried, we fought. I hit her back, left a bruise. I had my wig on from performing, she tore it off. Eventually, we grew tired of fighting and I left. Interesting. So let's t look up, like, fight. Do we already do fight? And then argue. Yeah. yeah. We did palindrome still. married for ten years, stuff accumulates. We could argue about anything. But he's so nice. That doesn't help. He tries to smooth things over and that just makes it worse. We're both passive aggressive, so we never normally argue directly about anything. Okay. Then we can type in argument. Because they had an argument. Well, I guess that's just going to skip it. Helps if I spell it right, I guess. There's no couple stuff. A stupid argument. Nothing specific. No one knows how to push your buttons better than those you're close to. Well, that sounds like Eve. No. I mean, yes, we have arguments, but he never runs off. He always comes back, we make up. It's always that way. Yes. He left after the argument. It was about eight o'clock. Okay, that was random. All right. Palindrome. That was the only time they used that. So what was the other section? Let's refresh this. So we're getting pretty good. We're about halfway there, I think. I don't know what that is. So I want to say there's one other city I wanted to say, but we can type in like random stuff like eight and then like boom. I think when I drove back, it was about eight or something. And I got back to the house about three. Three. Um, when I was eight, mother died. She slipped down the stairs. This is Florence. Well, this is Eve, but she's talking about Florence. I had read a diary at that point, and I knew she wasn't my real mother. So I burned the diary that day, and I left walked out and across the street. Okay. So that's how they got to be each other and she lived in the attic. And that that we didn't know already. Okay, so she lives in the attic. And we're trying to figure out why they did what they did. So we know they're twins. Did we ever look up twins? And or does twin does that even matter? It doesn't. Okay. It's smart enough to know the difference. I want to find out about parents. Did we look? I think we already looked that up. Um, parents died. There we go. Because something happened. No, no cat. My parents had a cat before they died called Domino. It was this little black thing with white dots. And we never did anything about the cat flap, but. Cat flap, that was the thing. thing. You could maybe squeeze through it. Because she mentioned the cat flap before. That was one of the things that I meant to type in. 
So let's ask about the cat. And there was only five mentions of the cat. No, they were shut. Most of the windows were really hard to open anyway. They're stifling in summer. They were painted over by my dad. Could have left a door open accidentally. Or there's a cat flap in the back door. We can look up dad too, because the parents died. Now, I kind of want to find out how they died. We loved our cat, Domino. Um, he had this little bell around his neck to stop him from killing birds in the garden. And we used to write each other notes and put them in the bell, and we could send them to each other. Mum found some of the notes once, and she thought I was just writing to myself because our handwriting was identical. And we had our own words for things, so she didn't quite understand them anyway. That's interesting. That's, they're so weird, man. Like, that's, what a weird way to live life. Yeah, when I was at school, I worked part-time in the front shop. It was sort of an extended family thing. My dad used to work there, my mom worked there before I was born. I took care of paperwork, filing, typing out invoices, that kind of thing. It was a good job for a girl back then. I didn't work a till or anything, but I was quite shy, so I wouldn't have liked to have worked a till. That's random, okay. Yeah. The whole thing was wrong. The bags, I, I think they were from my kitchen, you could probably check that. We never go into the cellar. It's just a place we put things we don't need. Dad used to grow mushrooms there. Okay, so mushrooms are a thing. The, the bags were taped up. I think it was parcel tape, but I think it was ours. Mushroom and parcel. So let's try mush, uh, mushroom and parcels. They said it was food poisoning. There was something in the food they ate. My dad liked to pick mushrooms grow them too. They said it was the mushrooms. Boom. Okay. It was hard to believe. Death caps. They have a skirt around the cap. My dad taught me that. But, I mean, the police had no reason to think it was suspicious. They lived alone. And no one had any reason to hurt them. Ooh. She blames Eve, you can tell. Because Eve lived in the attic, and she blames Eve, you can tell. I was living in the attic. It was a very hard time. I was depressed. I was still pretty sick of the STD. When I came down one morning, they were dead. They were in bed and both had been sick. They'd thrown up a lot. Ew. And I just let through it. The police said it was mushrooms they ate. Dad was a mushroom expert. I mean, he used to take us picking with him and he taught us how to recognize them. And there's no way you would have picked death caps. See, that's Eve. She's even saying, like, whoa, something's but up. The police believe that's what happened. They never even looked in the attic. So. I'm wondering, just from, I mean, because we know Hannah killed Simon. I wonder if Hannah didn't kill her parents as a way of framing Eve. Because we already know she, like, yo, I I mean, I straight up tried to kill Eve. And she admitted that to the police, like, straight up. Like, yeah, my friend Eve, like, she pissed me off, so I just held her underwater, and I almost wanted to kill her. But I gave up in the end. Like, we're all good now. But I wonder if she didn't kill her parents and, and do it in a way that, the police would come up and go, hey, there's a random chick living in the attic. 
You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm really wondering if that's what happened. Like, I don't hold it past Hannah, because Hannah is sick in the head. Uh, let's do Simon. Uh, not blonde, but let's do... Because there were like 60 with Simon, so let's do like... Not blonde, we want to do with Eve. Nope. So about Simon... Wig? No, Wig didn't have any more. We knew Dad. We already got that. What about Simon? I mean, I don't want to really do that one because that's embarrassing, but I figured we'd get at least one more of them. Differences? She's a better driver than me. She passed the test for us. I tried to take it and nearly crash the car. Learned that you can't rely on confidence to get you through everything. Mm, she is the shy one. She was especially shy around boys. If Hannah liked a boy, I would have to pursue him. It was that way with Carl. Hannah met him first. She had such a crush. I let him take my virginity after a night that his band had played at. It got difficult. When I was with Carl, we would have sex, but Hannah couldn't. Couldn't let him see she was a virgin. She had lots of excuses. After a while, we decided that I should take Hannah's virginity. Whoa. It's not that different to a bruise, pulling a tooth, a graze. We used a hairbrush. After that, we took him in turns, though. I was always the one who seduced the boys. Until Simon. Okay. So, wow. Uh, that was more than I was ready for. Let's do hairbrush. Um, that didn't get anything. What about Carl? That was another name drop. There we go. <laughs> was he my first? No need to be so coy. <laughs> no, he wasn't my first. That would have been Carl. He was a local boy in a band. He was a bit of a shit. But he was sexy. <laughs> we were 15. All right. So we found more. No. Um, I was 15. Carl was older. 17, I think. I was really into him, regardless of how he actually behaved. Lots of drunken teenage sex. My God, lady, he did it calm in the down. Church once. It's stupid. So he got tired of us, and we split up after about six months. It was sad, but. Those early experiences, they help you realize who's really important to you, you know? Family. That's another word we haven't done yet. We need to do family. Family. So, Carl fucked off, and then there were other boys here and there, and then Simon. Okay. Another one there. Hannah was so smitten with Simon. She started getting jealous. Didn't want to share. Even the first date. We went to see Tom Cruise at the old Odeon. We both went. Kept changing places in the toilet. We only had the one best dress, so we had to keep swapping clothes. Must have thought we had terrible bladder problems. The next date, it was my turn. Um, at the end, I let him kiss me, but that was it. We didn't want another car on our hands, and the Ouija board had said to hold back. What? After that, it was Hannah's turn, and she slept with him. Broke the rules. 
deliberately broke the rules. She wanted to be the first to sleep with him. <laughs> I mean, that's when she got pregnant, from that one time. Boom. That's all it takes. So let's look at family. Nope. So that's not going to do it. Like, we're filling this up pretty good. Um, we only need mushrooms. What other mystery is there right now? So we still have some stuff at the end that I'm wondering. Let's look up Eve again. How many entries were for Eve? See, there's only seven entries with Eve in there. What about Hannah? Because she was talking about Hannah a lot. 18 entries. Hannah, we can do Hannah and Simon. There's another new one, there we go. Hannah had a miscarriage. This was late in the pregnancy and it left her infertile. Oh. Felt like the universe had corrected its course. We were aligned again. But Hannah and Simon were still living with his parents. They were married. Simon had a job at the Glaciers now. Eric had given him a full-time position after he left school. And then... Oh, then he met you. Um... What about, like, Hannah, like, kill? Hannah... Love, because she loves Simon. Really? Let's talk about, like, sing. Remember, because Eve said she was singing at that nightclub. Or that. Really? Okay. He's the best. Yeah, but seriously, like the first part, 100% is like, you tell us what happened. Um, all right. Did she, was she a dancer? I thought she was a singer. Well, let's see who that is. I guess you could call it that, but we were both, both happy to get married. It was a beautiful wedding. <laughs> we had our first dance to come back and stay. I'm not sure if that's a good wedding song, but I loved it. I chose it. I mean, it was genuinely our first dance. We'd never danced together before. It was probably awful to watch, but I enjoyed it. It felt like it was just me and Simon for that moment. Just the two of us. Always saying stuff like that. Always, she's always trying to get rid of Eve. 
that's always something. Did we type in married before? I guess not, because there's more. A long time. We got married when I was 17. Childhood sweethearts. Something like that. When you marry a detective. That's random and creepy. We got another achievement for that. So we're filling out the beginning good, but we're still missing a lot of the... So we gotta find out how she killed him. So like... I guess we told that she found out, right? Like, she found Eve. We just gotta piece together at the end. Let's try to see what we got. I have a really fast metabolism, so stuff like that just comes and goes. I don't know if there's much more that I can tell you, but I haven't already told the other policemen. Mm. I found the body. We look at body. Body. There's at least one more in the end. Can you imagine? I tried. I tried to get pregnant too, but it didn't happen. I slept with so many boys, men. My body refused. I think my period stopped because hers had. I was pretty ill. I mean, how could we stay the same now? I felt like Hannah had really fucked things up. Set us down separate paths. We had become different. Ooh. See, Eve always wanted to be all about it. And it looks like Hannah was like, yo, I need my space. But we want to find out more of what happened at the end. So we need to piece it together about... Um, let's type in like rubbish, right? Because the bins, the rubbish bins. So let's type in bins. Because that's where they put, her, put them in, right? Like... Um, we know that they were together, Eve and, did we type in Simon and Eve? I think we did. Yeah, we already did. We gotta find something towards the back. So, we know, where was this last part? I can't even play it from there. Let's play what this one was. No, it was just me and her. It was the name they were going to call their first child. They talked about it, convinced it was going to be a girl. Remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. So we can do child. I don't think we've done child yet. We have not. Yeah, we were 17. Another 17. It was a nice wedding, people said. Simon looked very handsome in the photos. His parents paid for everything, but he's an only child, so it was important to them. It was what they called a shotgun wedding, but if you looked at the photos, you couldn't tell. The dress was beautiful. It looked like Princess Diana's. <laughs> the train wasn't quite as long, though. There's a great photo of the bridesmaid helping to carry it out of the car. All right. So that reminded me. So let's, we talked about Hannah smashed the mirror, right? So is there another thing with smashed? Nope. Well, how many mirror entries do we have? 11. Can we have broken mirror? There we go. It happened very quickly. We hardly had to talk to each other. We agreed almost silently. The baby was what mattered. We'd help each other. We cleaned up. We bagged up the broken mirror, her clothes. They're gone. We took him down to the cellar. 
we knew I, we had an alibi and we wanted the body to be found later. We wanted to have suspicion on us so we could then disprove it rather than have it longer. Better to keep the body in the house than risk being seen with it. The watch, that was my touch to make sure the alibi stuck. Huh. So we can look at alibi. Silent. Nope. Silence. Hmm. So we're starting to figure out. So, like, they definitely planned the end. There were a bunch of baby ones. Baby important. There we go. It's like I told you before, I drove. I took the car and drove. I don't have my own car, but I have a spare set of keys. I just drove north. I wanted to think for some space between me and them. Everything I told you before is true. I stopped at Glasgow. I was tired, exhausted. I pulled out and I hit a car. My car was okay, but I was worried about the baby, so I went to A&E to get the okay. Everything was fine. I slept in the car. When I woke, I tried to call Hannah from a payphone. She wasn't answering. And then I decided to drive back. I had decided that she was more important to me than Simon. Oh. So let's just type in important. And see what comes out of that. There we go. I thought it maybe sound suspicious. It's not a normal thing to do to drive to the other end of the country. I just... I wanted to keep it simple. I know it was stupid not to tell you everything. Saying I spent the night in Glasgow when my husband went missing, I thought it would... You know, distract you from what was important. It's different now. Now he's. Yeah. Now he's dead. All right. So now we have a better understanding of some of the stuff coming up in here. So. Say we drove because she talks a lot about driving. Let me see. Yes, I drove in here because I remember well I went over the river and then there was a church there. Yeah, and I probably parked. Well, I remember seeing a street sign called Princess Street. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure it must be this one. There. Okay, so let's look up, I think, bag, right? Like, they put them in bags. There we go. Five entries found in bags. And will the police let me back in the house? And they let me take a bag of clothes with me, but... That is not what I expected. Okay, so that's still the same. Um, what about bins? I think we did that already. Was there, I think, what about peace? Yeah, she already explained that part. Um, how many mirrors were there? There were quite a few mirrors. We, do we do present yet? Okay, there were only two present ones. We already have those. Um, we know he was a, wait, how many glass ones were there? Only five. See, Simon's your best bet, because there's 61 entries. I'm a glass. Nope. Hmm.
Because he was tall. I don't know. What is that? Oh, it's how many... Oh, it's how many entries they've had with queries. There we go. Nice. Murder. All right, so we've seen that. Um, Hannah brought a bunch. Have we done, we've done wedding? I don't think we did wedding. Let's do wedding. I don't think we did wedding. All right, we already have all that. Individual. Whoa. Okay. Individuality is there. What about... Hmm. Oh, you know what? 17. That's been mentioned m numerous times. And we haven't done 17 yet. There we go. Now we're back on track, guys. Let's at least get one new one here. I did. Well, we met when we were 17, both working at the Glaciers. Did I do child already? Yeah. But I don't think I did school. Mum and Dad had never had any reason to notice. They were always busy. If Hannah was eating a lot, they didn't mind. And she didn't put on any weight. That girl has a healthy appetite. Um, if they heard us talking in the attic, they just thought it was Hannah playing one of her games. And that Eve was our imaginary friend. <laughs> Once, she was already up and dressed and ready to go to school and I snuck down for a piss. Mum saw me in my underwear, she went mad. Get dressed this instant. So I ducked into our bedroom <laughs> and seconds later, out came Hannah, dressed and ready. My mum was amazed. <laughs> nice. All right. I don't know if we did friend yet. Yeah, yeah. No, he was as shy as me. And we need to be shy. We'd ask a friend to ask him out for me. We had our first date at the Odeon in North End. We went to see Whiskey Business. I had on my one best dress. Simon paid. He bought me a whisper, and I was worried about getting chocolate on my teeth. Simon's parents offered to put me up, but I didn't think it would be a good idea. It would be too sad. Not right now. I'm staying at a friend's. Okay. So we've got quite a bit of it. I'd say we have over half now. Let's do rubbish. Like, I really think we're missing something here. There's only one rubbish. Hmm. I'm surprised we haven't been killed yet. I mean, that's kind of weird. I don't see how it's hard. We've established I was in Glasgow when he was killed. You spoke with the hospital. Boom. I thought we did Glasgow. I guess there was more to it than... There was one other place that they had. We've already done Oxford. We already did a fair. How many did a fair have? We can double check real quick. That was closer up here. See, Eric had a bunch of them, too. Affair only had three. Eve had more. Hannah has quite a few. Let's 
let's type in police and see what we get. Seven entries, we got the first five. But we already have all those. I really kind of want to get back to here and find out what exactly is going on. But I wish we could see what those entries were. Oh, you can just click on it and it goes back to that entry. Okay. Oh, it even tells you 151. And then 133, etc. So you now even see that these two go one after the other. That's kind of cool. That's interesting. Um, all right. Well, I, I think we have a pretty decent idea. So if, I, if I'm putting this together and I'm out of words, I mean, we, we, I might come back to this if I, if I find the words that I, I want to get. But if I'm correct, Hannah has murdered Simon, who's her husband of 10 years. And after murdering her husband, she used Eve. So it looks like, I'm pretty sure this is Hannah. No tattoo. So in the beginning, if you notice in the early on, like early January, or early, uh, excuse me, June interviews, that's straight up Hannah in the beginning. And she's like, oh, hey, here's this, this, and this. And then she just like bounces, like straight up. And she's the one who actually killed uh, Simon. Then Eve shows up with her tat. Because like, and apparently the detectives didn't notice that, which is pretty poor detective detecting. But Eve shows up and starts doing the rest of it. And Hannah just disappears off the face of the earth. Meanwhile, Eve, who didn't actually do anything, minus accessory to murder, um, who doesn't actually exist, like she doesn't have like a birth certificate or anything, because like that weird thing with Florence and her, um, has been taking the fall all this time, but like she didn't commit a crime, so they're not going to be able to book her. And they're not going to be able to find this other girl. But what it sounds like, Eve and Hannah used to switch spots all the time. And they had this weird game they would play where like they pretended to be Hannah, like both of them did. And like they would switch back and forth over who was the real person. And the other one would like stay at home, like Hannah would do a test. And then if she sucked at math, like Eve would come in and do the math test. And likewise, when they went into relationships, like straight up, I mean, Eve would be like, yo, or Hannah would be like, hey, I like this guy. Hannah and Eve would be like, I got you, fam. And like seduce some dude so that they could go date him until it was up, done with. And they would always stay the same. They, they learned the exact same handwriting. They would always stay the same, like to things I'm not gonna repeat, it was gross. Uh, they always remained exactly the same up until they met Simon and then Hannah falls head over heels for Simon and like gets pregnant and then now they're different so then she moves in with uh, Simon's family Eve is now out by herself but it sounds like Eve was still like whatever and I'm pretty sure Hannah straight up like murdered her family trying to blame it on Eve because like she's afraid that Eve is going to come in and like rain in on her parade and try to take Simon from her and she's starting to get like really selfish and like I want Simon Simon is mine and it's like okay whatever and I'm pretty sure she's trying to frame Eve I'm pretty sure that was Hannah's doing then Eve getting her own life now that her parents are now dead as well and Florence has been dead since she was like 8 is out on her own straight up like with a wig like a blonde wig on like singing and dancing at some club and like it wasn't Glasgow it was some other city uh, I think it was The Rock that they were singing at or whatever but like she's just singing and dancing and like Simon bounces in here and it's like hey oh my god you look just like my wife and of course he like she knows because she's been hanging out and being part of this life they start talking and doing and then I'm assuming and like this is where in fact let me look at this up while we're talking here um I'm assuming he finds out. Uh, like, Simon has to find out. Uh, well, hang on. We'll do, like, tell Simon. 
Because I'm assuming that's what happens in this right here. I told her it was one of my boyfriends, someone I had met in the bar. I think she was happy. But I could tell she was thinking, why couldn't it happen to her and Simon? Oh, because she got pregnant. The real life. Why not them? Yeah, so, and then Hannah obviously has a miscarriage when she got pregnant. And then, apparently, Simon and Eve, like, start bumping uglies and straight up have a baby, or they're starting to. Then she told me she wanted to help more. She said I should move in with her. She would come clean with Simon about me. I was family. I couldn't have a baby in a bed set. I told her I didn't want to tell Simon. Told her to wait for the time being. And I think that changes. So, like, I think they tell Simon is what I think happens. So, pretty sure they end up telling Simon. And he finds out and is, like, straight up, like, well, if I'm going to choose, I'm choosing baby number two and going with Eve with a blonde wig. And I think Hannah finds out and, like, it sounds like she was okay with it at first or she sounded like she was okay to Eve. But... When he, well, I mean, you heard it on, on here as well. When she walks in and sees that he gave Eve the same mirror that's allegedly like super unique, that's handmade that he gave Hannah, she loses it and like smashes the mirror, goes crazy, and then just straight up like full ham, losing her mind. And I mean, she ends up grabbing a shard of it as they're fighting. And like swings it and unintentionally slits his throat. And they're like, whoops, like now what do I do? You know, and they don't know, like basically the, now these two, well, excuse me, these two are now in a predicament where we got to figure out what to do because like homeboy is dead and we don't, we got to figure something out. And that's where they concoct this whole plan of switching back and forth and letting like uh, Hannah leave. And so that's what happens. And at the end, like, we, we heard Hannah's like, I'm not even real. Like, well, she's real, obviously, but like, you know what I'm saying? Like, she's like, I'm not even a, um, like, licensed person. And I didn't commit the crime. I was in, like, Glasgow. Like, straight up, when there, like, this time when this crime was supposed to happen, I was in the hospital on the other side of the country. I came back down and found the body. So I straight up have an alibi. It wasn't me. So you have nothing on me. So like that's what they ended up doing. So anyway, it was a very interesting game. Like I'll, I might come back and finish it up. Like we do have some things to finish up or whatever. But I think we got a pretty good idea. We found out why their parents died, and I'm pretty sure it's her. Um, we find out well, why Simon died, for the most part. Um, there's still some small things in between that we kind of figure out, and we've watched them out of order. So you kind of try to figure out what goes to what, and try to figure out. And you got to kind of pay attention to the dates of when everything goes. But pretty neat. It was a nice little narrative. I mean, obviously, you guys let me know down in the comment section below what you guys thought. And uh, as always, hit smack on the like button. And we will see you next time.